what would be now i wrote classic horror i'd say what's just your favorite black black and white horror film oh, oh i think i think it's got to be the raven from the universal Ooh. classics yeah so i i remember growing up and i i the amount of hours i've tried to spend finding this bit video uh this advert so there was um i think it was in front of the brendan fraser mummy so on the uk vhs they had a universal monster legacy trailer and i mean this thing was beautiful the music the shots and i always remembered there was a car falling off a um cliff oh, you're right oh that right yeah. i thought you'd just yeah. gone for yeah. a minute um yeah so there was a car kind of uh swerving on the road and it it kind of tumbles um yeah i'm trying to be careful with wording but yeah it's yeah it's, it's very <laughs> yeah uh, um and i could never find that in any of the classic universal monster movies i was like well what's going on and then recently we've had a bella lugosi set so it was murder at the rue morgue um oh god uh black hat and raven and i bought it i was like i, I remembered them two black hat and raven especially being part of that kind of legacy collection so i was like <laughs> right i need to see these and i love rue morgue i thought black hat was okay because it was more carloff was the kind of uh menace and then yeah. in Raven, it's Bella Lugosi, and Bella Lugosi in that film, like genuinely, like he is top tier in that film, like chewing scenery, and it was so great to kind of then see Boris, who has a little bit more kind of range, play a more subdued character, and it was just brilliant like he was broken and stuff and it was just how he was acting oh it, it's incredible like i love that film so much but yeah what's your i that's that's a very long time ago i saw that so i i think i actually have this box set that you're referring to is it like a gothic horror one like an orange box set no no so if i'm not mistaken universal released about like 30 movies and they were pushing them at the time of the Brendan Fraser thing. And it came with like a 90 minute documentary about the Universal Legacy or two hour documentary. Um, and they had busts of the Wolfman, Dracula and Frank uh, Frankenstein's creature. My brother so, got this set. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Got it, yeah. 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 And I, I, I think it was that. But they were they were promoting them releasing these movies, basically and yeah as i say like I, there is a version of that out there but i always remembered it with images of the raven and uh black cat but i could never seem to find it so unless it was me making it up but i don't know then, then again it could just be a version that maybe just the uk got there is a lot of versions that you guys would get that we wouldn't say because we have um well, apart from umbrella which i'm guessing you bought some stuff from from umbrella entertainment with us yeah. There's also um oh my god what's their name uh, which one sorry not monster no not monster, monster I know the boys from monster it wasn't monster it was something I've actually got do I have any of their films nearby yeah I it's um <laughs> I can't read them from here I can just see the titles I can't see where the distributor was. <laughs> But um, I don't know, there, there was this company that have done a lot of, like, remastered Fire in the Sky. They've remastered... Um, imprint? Imprint, yes. Yes. Yes, Imprint's the one. Yes. yes. Because they, they put Haunted on Blu-ray, the, um, the James Herbert one adaptation, and I, with Kate Beckinsale, and I loved it. Yeah. Yes, Imprint is the one, yes. Alrighty, so for me... My favourite classic no. would be yeah. House on Haunted Hill. The original Vincent Price 1950s movie. Absolutely brilliant. I remember watching the remake. Like, Obviously, I watched that first because, I don't know, I've never had a problem with black and white films, but I watched that one first. And I don't know, it 
watching the original after kind of made me more impressed with the original just because it kind of didn't need the remake it's a fun remake like i do enjoy remakes that dark castle did but it was perfect as the, the way it was it didn't need to have ghosts it didn't need to have blood and gore it just worked perfectly the way it was it's yeah. just a beautiful little black and white film and vincent price is just amazing because in everything oh. he does his performance is just like effortless he's just isn't he's a what can i what word can i say that's not gonna get me <laughs> on tiktok live um butthole i don't know can i say that <laughs> you, you just play so. so one really well there you go uh, if the if the screen goes blank then um that's the tiktok god saying stop yeah <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> we're, we're, but, we're yeah, on here till they start yeah. yeah yeah but um the original haunting is actually quite good as well i wasn't a fan of the remake but the original haunting is that one got me as well so that was pretty impressive for it to do that yeah that's definitely one i need to go back to because um yeah the, the the remake just it's it's that kind of early 2000s kind of approach in it it's that you know they they took all these old ips and just tried to you know gloss them up and it's like they work you know, yeah yeah because like, they're black and white you know yeah i, I don't understand the glossing it up like it's what they did with um like the, the remake oh my god my stutter the remake of psycho how they made everything you know bright and technicolor oh, and you're like yeah. but if you are doing this shot for shot but just making it, it making it all in color you've just proved the film was perfect the way it was yeah and, 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 and i don't know there's, and, there's something about it i hated uh, th that is that is something that i i, I genuinely just found so interesting because Gus Van Sant had just come off of Goodwill Hunting, and he could do anything in Hollywood. And the first thing he said is, "I want to remake Psycho, shot for shot." And he did it as an experiment. And uh, Michael Haneke has done it as well with Funny Games, and they did it as a complete experiment to say, "Can you actually remake a film?" And you look at like how the Hitchcock Psycho and obviously Gus Van Sant's one is obviously you've got practically the same it was exact same script and everything and I think even the editor was talking about like how they were timing shots to be exactly like that exactly the same and they said they couldn't do it because of how the performances were different and you know obviously things like that but it's just it's a weird experiment and I love that Psycho, the remake of Psycho, but as an as the experiment, it is not as it's nowhere near as okay. good as the original. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm controversial, but um, <laughs> you know, I'm 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 not going there. Like it's it's a strange film, but that's why I like it. You know, and that's where a lot of my taste comes in, like things like that, where it doesn't gel. But I'm fascinated yeah. in thinking, right? How could it work? You know, or what what miss did they miss if you get me yeah because like i didn't i didn't completely mind uh vince vaughn's portrayal of um of norman no but the moment when he's looking through the wind looking sorry, looking through the, the wall and they added a noise in when he's watching was completely unnecessary it just it just added like a level of gross that we just didn't need i don't need to be hearing that you know what i mean no one needs to be hearing that <laughs> but um yeah but it's probably a lot, probably the lowest of the Norman Bates um, portrayals that I've seen because I've seen some pretty good ones, especially if you've ever seen like the the sequels to Psycho, which are actually surprisingly great. Yeah, Henry Thomas does a pretty good one. Yeah, because he's the he's young um, Norman Bates in four, isn't he? So he is. Yeah. Yeah. And and but you yeah. think like a, a film with that kind of legacy shouldn't have sequels yet the sequels aren't that bad you know like mm. two two is a legacy sequel like they made it like 30 years after and the fact yeah. it's as good as that you know it's as good or just below the original it's like okay cool right it's a different kind of film but it's quality and then you yeah. know part three was one that i didn't quite jive with but then obviously part four I've, I'm, I'm all right with but like they're not terrible and it's like 
just just to quickly diverge because i've got a platform now it's like alien yeah yeah alien one to four like mm -hmm. you know i i know three and four get so much hate but like you look at like even the extended cut of three and even like four theatrical or extended however you want to watch them they're not that bad like as the the quality is still there the production levels are still quite high the stories take weird turns fair play you know but yeah like it's consistent as a franchise and it's like how do they i i i don't know like yeah like that that's that's the rarity when you see so many other franchises dip off after number one you know or whatever so. because um yeah n number four of psycho is was it like a made for tv one as well so to see it still had that kind of quality to it and uh danny boy from the creepy cat podcast is watching so hey, hey danny oh. yeah. <laughs> i've actually asked him to be on the podcast when i actually start doing it so it'd be good to have him on well, hey. um yeah so apart from those i honestly oh my god i understand what you mean about like the dipping of quality because if you watch mm. the first Candyman movie superb oh, yeah. movie the the first sequel um farewell to the flesh actually pretty good number three really really dropped off yeah i'm sorry as much as i love candy man candy man is my second favorite villain like he is just yeah. up there for me yeah and oddly enough he's very similar to freddy because he doesn't really exist he exists in fear but then obviously yeah. with the remake he's kind of like um he's a spirit essentially mm -hmm. um the, the new one was fantastic, but yeah, it really dipped off for number three, which is a real shame because Candyman, that mythology is fantastic oh. as well.